Yo everyone, Tyson Gaming here, and welcome back to my Pokemon Platinum Extreme Randomized Nuzlocke. Uh, a quick thank you for the, for you all who pointed out that my mic sounded pretty muffled in the last episode. I swapped to a new pair of earbuds for recording purposes, and adjusted the settings in my recording software, so we should be good. I did do some mic checks, and it didn't sound as muffled as last Tuesday's episode, so we should be good from here on out. But obviously if it still sounds a little muffled to you guys, let me know. I'll try to fix it, but from at least what I can tell right now, we should be good from here on out. Anywho, since last episode, I did do a little bit of off-camera grinding. Or shouldn't say not off-camera. I did record it mainly because I knew one of my Pokemon would evolve during the training. And that Pokemon was the Pidgey I got for my very first encounter. And it randomly evolved into a Dark-type Lucario. Which is absolutely fantastic, because Lucario is one of my favorite Pokemon. I mean, it has a Dark type, so obviously it can learn either Night Slash or Dark Pulse, so that's pretty good, considering Lucario can be run physical or special. And the coolest part is, is the ability it got. It got Simple as its ability. Which, in case you don't know, Simple will double the effect of a stat-adjusting move. Which is good and bad. Good, because obviously if I get, like, Nasty Plot on this thing, you go to plus four instead of plus two. However, that's also detrimental because obviously if he hits get hit by like a growl, he'll go to minus two attack instead of minus one. So it's kind of a double-edged sword, but it's obviously super cool that he's got it. Unfortunately, the only move that I have that can take advantage of it at the moment is the TM4 Amnesia. So I mean, I could essentially get, what, plus four special defense right away if I really wanted to, but... I don't really see the need for that right now. So we'll have, just have to obviously keep an eye out for any stat boosting moves and pray that Lucario can learn it. <clears throat> but anyways, plan for today's video is to obviously head on into the second gym and take on Gardenia. Then after that, depending on how much time I have left, I might take on the Team Galactic stuff at the building up top. But obviously we'll have to wait and see, but first things first, I want to get some more potions. And then we can head right into the gym. Now if I remember correctly, yeah, Platinum Gym is radically different than Diamonds. And the only reason why I mention that is because, again, the, the gym I take on the most in Gen 4, or say like Sinnoh, is Diamond and Pearl's version of the gyms. But anyways, oop, there's a random item there real quick, I always forget that that's there. Uh, Master Ball. Ooh, a Thunderstone. That would have been so good if it was a Firestone for my Vulpex. But yeah, I've, during my training, I mainly focused on the main members of the team and then the Pidgey because I had faith it would evolve in something good. I didn't train up Vulpex because, I mean, without a Firestone, I really can't do much with it. Because obviously, until I find a Firestone, this thing will remain a Vulpex forever. And then, as for Leo's case, I, uh... I just ran out of time, I'm gonna be honest, I ran out of time and didn't get a chance to train him up either. So I'll definitely have to do that in between this episode and Thursday's episode. But anywho, hello Gardenia, how you doing? <clears throat> I think it's always cool that Gardenia makes, makes you fight all of her uh, gym trainers. I think that's actually really cool, because I mean, in all honesty, because I'm, I'm pretty sure if I remember correctly, her aces are level 22 and 20, so I'm still a little underleveled for her. So it's always kind of cool that they actually make you battle the gym trainers to, you know, bring up the, uh, bring your level up to her level, which is always super cool. Hello, Mantike, how you doing? You actually got some pretty decent levels. Yeah, and the only other big thing about, obviously, Lucario is that he doesn't have any stab moves yet. Because before, obviously, when he was a Pidgey, he was a pure flying type, so all he has is flying type moves. And I don't necessarily remember when Lucario learns new moves. I don't remember, I'm pretty sure he gets... Oh, hi, Moltres, how you doing? 
Like, I'm pretty sure, yeah, level 30, I think at level 25 and level 30 he gets moves, but I don't exactly remember. And, oh, is that a vacuum wave? No, that's normal type. I'm about to say, oh, cool, Moltres is a, oh, it is a fighting type. So, wait, why did vacuum wave do new, oh, I bet I know. I bet Moltres has normal eyes. That's unfortunate, Moltres. That is quite unfortunate. Fortunate. All right, level 20. Good, good, good. Good, good, good. I feel like I kind of find it funny how my Pidgey evolved to it into a pretty decent Pokemon with an insanely busted ability. Because when it was a Pidgey, it was a, a decent Pokemon, but at the same time kind of bad because it was a Route 1 bird. With probably one of the worst abilities in the world, which in case you guys haven't seen the first few episodes of this series, in case you haven't, at the end of the video I will have a link to the playlist of Pokemon by Extreme Randomized Nuzlocke. And the, main, uh, the ability it had when it was a Pidgey was Stall, which will always, always make my Pidgey go last. So it doesn't matter like how fast my speed stat is, Pidgey will always move second. Which sucks, I don't know why it's a, that's an ability. Oh, hi Pidgeot, how you doing? Uh, alrighty, let's keep her moving forward. Yeah, because... Not very effective, so you are... Psychic. Okay, that's gonna be annoying. Wait, if you're Psychic, then I have the perfect counter for you, because I have a Dark-type now. Which is honestly pretty sick. <laughs> yep. And again, unfortunately, I don't have any dark type moves, but the, again, a good big bonus of it being a Lucario is that again, I can run it either physical or special, so he can actually take full advantage of Pidgey's moves. Earth power. Interesting. So, a psychic and ground type? Very interesting type combination. Very interesting type combination. Yeah, because I don't think Ground and Psychic is an actual type combination in any of the actual games. Or if it is, I can't really think of one off the top of my head. Is, is Ground and Psychic an actual type combination? Well, I don't think it is, no. Hello, Ekans, how you doing? Go for Pluck, because I don't know what your typing is. Okay, it's neutral, but I mean, it's an Ekans versus a Feraligator. Yeah, I wasn't going to be able to do much. And then Makuhita, hello there. You only got a bad part about being, uh, recording two episodes a week is that in between those two episodes, I kind of forget what all the Pokemon typings are. There are obviously some that stick out to me, like obviously the Steel and Fighting type Bampy that took out my Buizel, and then Arceus, which is a Steel and Ice type, which I found in the Eternal Forest. Cool, cool, cool. Yeah, this is such a cool gem. A lot better than the Diamond and Pearl one, definitely. Cool, cool, cool. Do I have an item to wake up Yuxi? Do I have... I have a lot of cooking, but I think I want to save that for in battle. So I will head back to the Pokemon Center. Oh, they, they straight up eliminated that waiting room in the Diamond and Pearl Eterna Forest. Not Eterna Forest. Hello. Eterna Gym. Because in Diamond and Pearl, there's a waiting room you actually go to, and then you go into the actual gym. It's kind of interesting that they got rid of that. Most interesting indeed, but also really, really cool. Alright, let's keep her moving. Yeah, because after this is, what, Jupiter? Yeah, Commander Jupiter and her ace is... Pretty sure it's a level 23 for Skunk Tank usually is. I can't remember. But, obviously we're not going to be fine. 
Yeah, is there any funny things or something like that? I know it's in the upper 20s, I think it's a little bit low, either a little bit higher or lower, lower than where Gardena is at. A low Stabilize. I feel bad for a Sableye, because this is a Pokemon that gets completely nerfed by an extreme randomizer. Because obviously the, the number one thing that makes Sableye so good is its Ghost and Dark Typing, which... Yeah, in this generation there's no weakness to it, because obviously Fairy doesn't exist yet. Oh, that's it? Only four trainers? Not four trainers, uh, three trainers instead of the Gym Leader? Yeah, because in Diamond and Pearl it's, what, five? Interesting. I mean, hey, I'm not complaining. Ten minutes in, we're finally at the gym leader. Alrighty, who do I... Yeah, clean up with Yuxi. I mean, Yuxi is just so good for elite Pokemon because of how bulky it is. Because even if it switches in to a Pokemon that has type of advantage you get, there's no way it's going to one-shot it. Because, I mean, realistically, only, like, like super powerful Pokemon, like... Pseudo or a boss are boss are just straight up one shot of UC. But hello Gardenia. Finally we're here. Alright, time for the second gym battle. Hopefully I do not lose. That'd be kinda of bad. So if I do lose, I will have to re-randomize again. Launch Pro, hello. Yeah, normally this would be a horrible matchup, but I've not seen a Honcho yet, so I don't know what typing you are. Okay, you're not dark at least anymore, but are you? Okay, two real ghosts. Okay, but yeah, you're a Honcho. Oh, he got... He got the Omni Boost. That's terrifying. Goes for again. I mean, if push comes to shove, I can swap out to Lucario. And I think I'm gonna have to do this. I don't think Scythe even allows you get the threat. If I can have the team to take off on Scorpion. Yep, no, I have to swap on over to my Dark Side. And Lucario, we got this. Super Potion, which shouldn't bring it back to full. Okay, um, question. Next take a clip close to the minute party. Okay, yeah, so 48, 47, so that's about the same. Aeroblast is yet yeah, 100, so yeah, Aeroblast is my strongest. Vacuum wing. Oh no. Wait, oh, fighting. So this would be with Hunt Wait. Or just randomly like that. Okay. Yeah, and there's no way Lucario outspeeds, so... Um... Sorry, Vulpex, you have to take one for the team. I'm sorry, little Vulpex, but as long as it doesn't use another ominous win, we're fine. Yeah, but I know it is Ghost and Fighting, so Toro should easily be able to come in and just Earthquake it. Toro has that plus one. I am underestimating Toro's play. Yeah, Toro's is so good. Toro's is such a good, good Pokemon. It outsped a plus one Pro. Interesting. Alright, Relicanth is up next. And I do not remember. I'm pretty sure I've seen a Relicanth before, but I do not remember what type it is. So I think what I'm going to do, and this is her ace. Okay, this is her strongest Pokemon. I'm going to use Balance. Try to see if I can get a Paralysis. Iron Defense. It is a Steel type. Oh boy. Paralysis. Okay, it is now plus four Defense. Oh. No, I'm going to be here a while. Okay. I know at the very least it's probably a steel type, so I mean I have to swap into Tauros. Yeah, because yeah, Tauros is the only thing that's going to be able to do any damage. My other typings are Dark, which doesn't do anything. Thanks to Pong. Okay, this shouldn't be too much because it's a Relicant. Relicant is made more for defense than attack. 
Oh wait, I can just roar it. Okay, it's water and steel. Duly noted. They survive it. Poros? Yep, we just roared away to get rid of its boots. Here we go. And then it has a great beyond. Which also, I also don't know what typing it is. Alright, swap back into Peralligator. That's a stress for 10 points. Boomerang. Okay, so it's a ground type. Perfect. Which means, nope, I don't want that. I want two potions to heal up Tauros. Because Tauros is probably going to be the only Pokemon I have that can take down that Relic Man. Sandstorm, which... Increases special defense of ground and rock Pokemon. Um... Let's go Flipper to Sky Attack. Oh, it has Rock Slide. Oh, I should not have gone for Sky Attack then. This rock is neutral against rock, so this rock slide's gonna really... Be okay, shiny. But okay, please don't get flinched. And you got flinched. Oh, boy. Okay, um... is not looking good for your boy. Because the only Pokemon I have that can take out either one of these Pokemon will be Horus. This is not looking good. And, and I don't think Tauros can just one-shot the, uh... Okay, it can almost one-shot Drapion. But I know it probably... Wait, how much is this gonna do? Okay, it only hits twice, which is good. Okay, finished off with Earthquake, got your last potion, which is good. The problem is now is Corellicant. I'm pretty sure Toros, even with Earthquake, does not one-shot it. There's no way it does. If I knock her down below 50%, her brine gets double. I'm pretty sure that's how that works. Brave Bird, which I will definitely take over Sky Attack. Sky Attack is strong, but Brave Bird is a better Sky Attack, honestly. Alrighty. We are in a bit of trouble. I need to heal up. But if I but if I stay in, it'll most likely go for Brine. But if I don't and I go to do Leo, it'll most likely go for Iron Defense. I am stuck in a pretty big conundrum. Because I don't have any sort of status for that thing. I think I lose this one. Yeah, but I have to go with my best play, which is unfortunately sacrifice my war turtle. I mean, if I train my war turtle up, like I had more time to train Leo, I probably would be in a much better spot. Because, I mean, with, with war turtle being being a fighting type, I'd probably be able to do it. But I mean, with with the Pokemon I have left, I have to heal a Torox. Blaze Kick. Try to get a little bit of damage off. Okay, that's unfortunate. There goes Leo. I mean, I think I can eventually take out the Relicant. It just all depends on how much damage Earthquake does. Okay, because we know the very least Relicant is a Steel type. Now the question is, is it Steel and Fire because of the Blaze Kick, or is it Steel and Water because of the Brine? I'm praying it's Steel and Fire. Because if it's quad weak since Earthquake, I'm pretty sure Tauros will have enough power to take it out. But if it's just regular, not uh, super effective, then I don't think it does, but this is my best play. This is my best play that I have. Come on, Tauros. Put everything you got into it, buddy. Put everything you got inside of Earthquake, please. No, it's... She has a fairy. I was I was never gonna take the citrus line. Okay, I think that brings me back outside of the double power range at least. Okay, that does about 
now. Okay. Earthquake did do quite a bit of damage. It did. The question is... And I, and I wasn't paying close enough attention. Okay, it brought it down to the yellow with one Earthquake. But the Citric Fairy bring it just outside of range of it? I'm pretty sure at the end of the day, whether or not this Earthquake kills Relicanth, I do take it out these next turn with UC Double Kick. But at the same time, I don't want to lose my Horus. Because having such a hard-hitting Pokemon with Earthquake is always so amazing. But I think in terms of battle sense, yeah, because I'm free out. Yeah, because pretty much all my Pokemon gets taken off by Brian no matter what. I just gotta try to go for Earthquake and pray. I mean, the other good thing is obviously Fissure, but that'd be suicidal if I went for that. I gotta go for Earthquake and pray. Alright, come on, Tauros. Get a high roll crit and we win. But I'm pretty sure if I get a high roll, I'm pretty sure it takes it out. You got the high roll. We're good. Okay, we're good. We're good. <laughs> it was just enough damage. Thank you. Poros for being one of the best Kanto Pokemon ever. I don't care what anyone says, Poros is an amazing Pokemon. <laughs> that was such a stressful battle. That was so stressful. I mean, again, if I had enough time to train up my War Portal with having Fighting type moves, I probably would. It probably would have been not that stressful. But unfortunately, I ran out of time, I made my decisions, and we lost. Let's, again, it's good that we still have my main team members, but... Worry Seed. It, no, that's what it regularly is. Huh, that was stressful. Thank you, Tauros, for being such a goaded Pokemon. Okay, what is our new TM? Please do something good. Oh, it actually is Worry Seed. Come on, man. I have not gotten a single good PM yet. That sucks, because I'm heavily relying on my TMs right now. But anyways, we got a we unfortunately lost both my War Turtle and my Vulpex. I mean, Vulpex, again, was a calculated loss, because I imagine that, yeah, either way, if Horus wasn't at full HP, it would not have taken the brine. So yeah, that was such a stressful battle. Wait, do I even have any other Pokemon in the PC? I don't think they do. I think all the Pokemon I have right now is just my four main team members. Well, you know, I still have my Carvana, that's right. Yeah, so I'll definitely bring Carvana on the team, just so I at least have a fifth team member. So unfortunately, if push comes to shove, I will have to sacrifice my Carvana. Which I don't want to do, because obviously it's a randomized evolution, but... Yeah, we have six deaths now, and we're only at the second gym. That is insane. Yeah, this randomized Nuzlocke is going way worse than the one I did back in Emerald. This is insane. But then again, my Pokemon Emerald Extreme randomized Nuzlocke team was a, a lot, a lot better right off the jump. Considering I had a Bug-type Mewtwo as my starter, and my first encounter was a Dragon-type Arcanine. I mean, granted, in terms of mechanics, Emerald is a completely different da game than Diamond and Pearl, but at the same time... Wait, where did we get cut? Wait, do we not do the building? Wait, where did we get cut? Wait, hold on, what? I'm so confused, because I'm pretty sure, yeah, because we saw Cynthia in the last episode. Oh, we do have cut. I'm dumb. Okay, um... Who do I want to teach it to? I'll teach it to Carvana for now. I 
Yeah, who is again out of the flying type. Yeah, I have such a big ice type weakness. Yeah, because yeah, the only Pokemon on my team that's not weak to ice is Lucario. Because I have a flying type Yuki, a flying type Feraligator, a flying type Pervana, and then a ground type Poros. Yeah, I need to get other taking so badly. And I'm pretty sure, but thankfully the third gym's not for a while, and I'm pretty sure if I remember correctly, you get one, two, at least three to four encounters before the third gym. Which is fantastic. I'm also going to get a key item. Yawn. Okay. Yawn could be a pretty useful team, so I'll keep that in the back burner. Because, I mean, if I can get another catch Pokemon, like another Pokemon that's designated for catching things, that team will be pretty good. Okay, what I'm going to do is go into the Cell Battle and have Yuxi and Tauros up front. Because obviously, again, Tauros has Earthquake and Yuxi the Foreign type. I mean, if I really wanted to, I could put Carvana up front with Tauros. I think that's pretty good. But obviously, we'll have to wait and see. Long Gone and Lily. Okay, um, I'm pretty sure these would be two Pokemon that can easily take an Earthquake. Oh yeah, Boros is so fast, like... Like, I'm surprised how fast this thing is. Like, I'm pretty sure... Yeah, it's easy to say that Toros is the best Pokemon I have on my team now. He's so good. Yep, and then you two should be able to the kill with five you. Okay, so Long Gone was Steel, Rock, Fire, or... I don't think I appreciate the only three typing with uh, the ground. Aerial Ace. I'll learn it. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll learn all the fuck for now. Like, it's always useful to have a never miss move like that. Extremish, pretty frail Pokemon, so Earthquake should take it out unless you're dead. But then, put Manaphy, hello there. Alright, so we will side in a Manaphy, and then, yeah, yeah, Earthquake. Because, I'm pretty sure, yeah, Earthquake should be able to take out both. Both of them are pretty frail Pokemon. So we should be good here. Okay, there goes Shroomish, and then yeah, Brian should easily to take it out with a side beam. Cool. Alright, let's just keep her moving. Yep, this is the wrong way to go, but that's fine. Got an escape rope, which should be useful for the later. We have to go do the Mount Hornet stuff. Alright, we have to go this way to go. Yeah, they definitely added a lot to the Team Galactic building here. Wait, are they letting me go all the way up to Juniper? Okay, noted that there are items there. I'll have to go back and get them. Why is it seem so dark in here? Macho Brace, which is for EV training. But anyways, hello Juniper, how you doing? Not Juniper, that's the professor in the next region, Jupiter. 
to get right into it. Hopefully you're not as stressful as Mars was. I can't really deal with another stressful battle today, especially after that gym battle. You have a Growlithe, which I know in the previous run, Growlithe was a Dragon type. I don't think it's a Dragon type now. At least not that I'm aware of. So it's poison, fighting, or it's one big one. That's fine, and then a roll. Okay, free battle. This battle is completely free. He has two extremely frail Pokemon. And okay, Jupiter is a little higher level than Gardenia. Not by much, but it is a little. Bit. So that's it. This. You know what? I probably should have kept Pluck, if anything. They're all going to have Citrus Trees. They can Speed Ray, so. Nope. So it's either a Ghost type or just randomly has. has, um. what do I call it? That are just randomly has confused, right? I forgot what the move called was for a second. Hello. Nightshade. Okay, so it is a ghost type then. A one Aeroblast should hopefully do enough damage. It does. Perfect. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Alright, and that's the. Galactus have taken care of, so we are done with Eterna City. Nice. Alrighty, before I go get the cycle, let's go get these other two items there. So again, I want as many items as I can get, because they could be Master Balls, and it'd be amazing if they were. Master Ball. Insect Plate, which I already have, unfortunately. And ooh, a Focus Sash. That'll be super useful for later. The only unfortunate part in a Nuzlocke, items like that are a one-time use. So, even if I was to use it in a battle, I would only need to use it for that battle. So, I'll probably save that for the very end of the game, like for the Cynthia fight. The only time I'll probably use that. Like, either for Cynthia or against, like, Cyrus or something. Either way, yeah, I have to hang on to that big time. But cool, cool, cool. But anyways, I think that's going to do it for today's episode. Next time we'll obviously grab the bike and head our way towards Hearthstone City. And start getting ready for the third... Oh wait, no. Oh wait, no, that's right. I completely forgot that Platinum changed the orders of the gym in this game. Because uh, the ghost type gym. I, I can't remember the gym leader's name. I know it's like the French lady. I can't remember what her... Oh yeah, it's Fantina. Fantina is the, the third gym leader in this game and not the fifth, that's right. Which means, yeah, I'll only have two encounters before the next gym. Which I mean, will be useful, but I can't believe I completely forgot about that. Because yeah, Maylene and the fighting type gym are the fourth gym, and the fifth gym is Crash or Wake. I completely forgot about that, that's insane. So yeah, we I mean, most likely won't be taking on Santina in the next episode, but we'll definitely be getting ready and hopefully getting lots of encounters. But anywho, if you guys have enjoyed today's video, make sure you smash the like button and subscribe if you haven't right today. And do upload this series every Tuesday and Thursday, so you don't want to miss a single episode. So with that all said, again, quick thanks to you guys for running up my audio issues. Hopefully I have it fixed and it'll be good going forward. With that all said, thank you guys for watching. Hope you enjoy the rest of your day. Peace.